In this lesson, we'll learn how to control the spacing between our letter forms. All right, so in the previous lesson, we learned a little bit about the anatomy of our letter forms. And, you know, it's time to begin thinking about the spacing between them, how these letter forms sit next to one another. Now, there's two basic ways that we can adjust the spacing between our letter forms. And we're going to go ahead and focus here on the top half of this document first. We're working on the file 05 underscore begin if you want to follow along at home. So the first method of adjusting the spacing between our letter forms is known as tracking. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a few examples here. Let me just zoom in. Uh, I've got basically lowercase and uppercase versions of Adobe Garamond Pro here. And the first example here you see that we have set the tracking to something very, very large, creating a lot of negative space here in between our letter forms. In our second example, we have the tracking set very, very small. It actually appears that several of these letter forms are actually touching one another. Well, let's go ahead and bounce over here to our character panel. And let me just go ahead and expand that out. And you're going to find the tracking value is right here in your character panel. It has a little A and a little V and a horizontal arrow with two, two heads on it. So uh, let's go ahead and select some of our type using our selection tool. Let me go ahead and click on this first word at the top and you'll see that the tracking has been set to something very, very large. It's been set to 300. Now, whenever you're creating type in any of the three applications, whether it's Photoshop, InDesign, or even Illustrator, it's always going to come in with a value of zero for your tracking. So let me just set this to zero. And you can always adjust that by either in Illustrator, clicking on this little arrow, coming down here, and you can select one of these positive preset values or one of these negative preset values. Now, we were at a 300. Let me go ahead and choose this 200 right here. You'll see we space this out. Now, if we choose a negative value, let's say we choose negative 100. You can see how tight the spacing between our letter forms gets. So, what tracking is, is a method of adjusting the space between multiple letter forms or even words at once. Now, we could actually use tracking to adjust the spacing between very, very large bodies of copy all at one time. So it's a very quick method of adjusting the spacing. Let me go ahead and undo this. Actually, let's go ahead and just type in that value of 300 again here. And let's come over here and take a look at what this looks like with uppercase letters. Now, this is actually a pretty common occurrence, especially in, for example, movie posters, to really space out uppercase letters, adding a really dramatic feel to them. So the way they've done that is using tracking. Now, as you can imagine, the further these letter forms get apart, the, uh, the more it's going to take for your audience to read these letter forms, the more work they're going to have to put into it. And obviously, the closer these letter forms are together, the more you run the risk of letter forms being confused for uh, a different letter. Maybe two letter forms are merging together, creating uh, a letter that's not even there. So uh, be really careful with your tracking. Uh, we're going to talk more about that here in just a moment, but I want to go ahead and shift our attention down here to the large word typography. I'm going to zoom in on that here, because the next form of adjusting the spacing between our letter forms is known as kerning. Now, kerning is different than tracking in that what we're doing is we're actually only focusing on pairs of letter forms. We're focusing on the space between maybe this letter right here and this letter right here. And there's not actually a control for kerning up here in our character panel. The closest thing we have to a control up here is this little box right here. If we drop this down, you can see right now it says auto. Uh, and you can see here that we have options for optical and metric. And what this box does is it allows us to choose the kerning method used for that type. Now, that's, uh, that's all dependent on the kern pairs that the original type designer built into the typeface. So we can choose metric if we want to use those kern pairs, or we can choose optical if if we want to let Illustrator de determine the best spacing it can between the letter forms. Now, this particular example is uh, pretty exaggerated. There's some really uneven spacing between these letter forms, but I figured it'd give you a good opportunity to practice this method. So, in, in order to fix the spacing between these letter forms, the first thing we need to do is look at the forms of the letters and determine what the best spacing is. I always like to start with two 
really vertical edges that might be next to each other and use that as a baseline for kerning an entire word like this. In this particular word, we actually don't have really two good vertical edges that are right next to each other to kind of determine uh, what the baseline for our kerning throughout the word should be. So I'm going to kind of use the spacing between uh, the G and the R and then the R and the A here as kind of a baseline to go off of. So looking at the spacing here and what that spacing looks like, I want to come over here and identify the, the biggest problem areas first. I'm seeing that there's a very large gap here between the A and the P, and there's a very large gap here between the P and the O. Now, this gap is actually being accentuated by the fact that these are two round letter forms, uh, at least on this side of the P, and they're working together to create the illusion that there's a larger gap here than there really is. So uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and fix these. Let's go ahead and select our type with our selection tool. And we can grab our type tool and just click in between the two letter forms, making our flashing text insertion cursor flash there. So in doing that, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my Alt key. And I'm going to just move these closer together by hitting the left arrow on my keyboard. Now that's with my Alt key pressed down. And I'm going to slowly move these in together pressing the arrow key one press or one uh, one key at a time just slowly moving these letter forms closer together now if you're following along with me your letter forms may be moving together a lot faster than mine are and that's because of a setting in your illustrator preferences let me go ahead and show you where that is I'm gonna come up here to my edit drop down menu I want to go to preferences and let's go ahead and choose type alright now, if we look here, there's a lot of preferences here. We're not going to obviously go through all these, but the one I want you to pay attention to is the tracking setting right here. You can see mine's set to 1,000th of an M. Yours is probably set to 120th of an M. I'd go ahead and change that to 1 or a value that's very, very low. And what that will allow you to do is as you kern these two letter forms together, it'll take you more presses of your arrow key to get those letter forms closer together, giving you more control. So, uh, just one word of advice there. One thing that I usually always change anytime I'm working in Illustrator or InDesign. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and continue to kern these letter forms together. I'm going to just hold down my arrow key for multiple presses, and we're going to get those pretty close. Let's go ahead and m use our arrow key to move over between the A and the P here. I'm going to move those closer together here. Remember, we're using the spacing between the G and the R, as well as the R and the A, as sort of a baseline to do this. I may come over here to the HY pair and kern those in a little bit. And maybe just a little bit more here. All right. I'm going to come over and maybe even kern the Y and the P some, and the T and the Y some as well. So let me go ahead and get that in there someplace where I'm comfortable with. Now, there's one thing you should probably watch out for when you're kerning pairs of letter forms, and that's, again, the overall form of the letter. Now, you can see here, because of this angular stroke on our Y, it's creating this sort of a wedge of negative space between the Y and the P. So, scenarios like this may require a little bit more kerning. One hint I can give you is if you're ever unsure about the way you've kerned a, letter, a, a pair of letter forms in a word, go ahead and zoom out on that word here. Or maybe even squint your eyes at it and look for the awkward spaces in the word. If the word seems to flow fairly well, then you've probably done a pretty good job at kerning your letter forms. Okay, so this is actually a process that'll take a lot of practice for you to get used to. But the more you do this, the better you're going to get at identifying awkward spaces between letter forms. Now, this is a process that I typically do for things like headlines, places where type is rather large. When you're dealing with things like body copy, very small type, 10, 12 points of type, I very rarely, if ever, would recommend doing individual kerning between pairs of letter forms. I would typically use something like tracking because the smaller your type is, the more these awkward gaps are going to disappear. Let me go ahead and show you an example here in InDesign. All right. Now this is just a standard large body of copy here. With the tracking, you can see if I select some of this text, 
it's set to zero right now. But let me go ahead and show you another way we can adjust the tracking. I'm going to go ahead and click on this paragraph three times to, sele to select it. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and again use my arrow keys. This time I'm going to move my arrow to the right. And watch that tracking value in my character panel. You can see that every time I press my right arrow key, it's jumping up by 20 points. And you can see what we've done here is we've created a lot of space in between all the letter forms in this paragraph, making it very hard to discern between words in the paragraph. So again, be very, very careful using tracking on large bodies of copy. Uh, if you ever need to use some, it won't be very much at all. So we'll go ahead and set that back to zero. All right, so in this lesson, we've learned how to both adjust the tracking for our type and adjust the kerning between pairs of letter forms. In the next lesson, we're going to move forward and we're going to learn what letting is.